Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy, Andrew G, and welcome to this really exciting episode of The Public Affair. I feel like I gotta reline my glasses. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the show. I'm really excited to be doing this episode. I feel like it's very necessary and we all really need to hear it. Um, and before we get started, I definitely wanna thank you guys for all the love and support of The Public Affair with over 1,000 subscribers in just a little bit over a year. And of course, to Rogue Media Network with Mike Hamilton for being the mastermind of editing and producing and everything. You're the best. And of course, to everybody who supports the show, my love is just eternal for all of you. Thank you guys so much. Before we get started with this really great episode, I definitely want to give a shout out to a few of our sponsors of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to you by Four Brothers Construction with my boy, Joel Olvera. He provides custom home designs and renovations. He also focuses on roofing, remodeling, renovations, plumbing, tree removal, electrical work, and so much more. Joe has a whole entire team of snacks to provide all these services for you. So if you guys need any of those services done, you're definitely going to call Joel Olvera with Four Brothers Construction. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my boy Frank Biza with BNJ Refinishing. He focuses on resurfacing bathtubs, counters, sinks, tiles, and more to original showroom quality. Offers five-year warranty on most work and has the best prices in town. And of course, Frank doesn't stop there, like I say in like the last 50-something episodes of The Public Affair. Frank also has Co-Town Tint with a mobile tint and detailing business that offers the best high-quality film and products and will be all competitive prices. There is nothing I love more than being at work and I'm busy and I don't have time to go get my car detailed. All you got to do is call Frank with Co-Town Tint and he'll come pick it up for you. Detail it to make it look all snackish and then bring it back to you. It's like a whole vibe. I love it so much. Frank, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair with B&J Refinishing and Co-Town Tint. You hustler! I'll say it again until I die, because he is. <laughs> Thank you for sponsoring this episode. Of course, the Pollo Box and Audio with my boy Jeffrey Monreal. He focuses on installation of stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building custom subwoofer enclosures and much more. Jeffrey is definitely a jack of all trades. He's given me so many awesome features in my car, like Apple Play Car Stereo, like Backup Camera, like Auto Start, which is a game changer in this freaking heat, man. I love some Pollo Box and Audio, and he's full time with it now. I'm very proud of Jeffrey Monreal. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. I've of course, the David Santabana is the number one sales agent at Alinea Real Estate. He'll help you buy a home or sell your home. Make sure you follow him on Facebook at David with Alinea or call the number on the screen, darling, for all your real estate needs. Every time I turn around, David is selling a home left and right because he's very professional, because he's very punctual, and because he's just a go. I love me some David Santabana. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Marco Scoletto with Midway Nutrition. He's located on Hewitt Drive. He offers meal replacement shakes with tons of different flavors. Of course, my favorite is the Honey Nut Cheerio, but there's so many more that he's got that's just so delicious and scrumptious. Um, so if you're looking for a little bit more of a healthier meal replacement, you're definitely going to hit up my boy Marcos Coldetta with Midway Nutrition located on Hewitt Drive. They also have Waco Nutrition and Energy on Spates. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Sid Rodriguez at Elite Barbershop located on Hewitt Drive. Make sure you guys download the Cut app or call the number on the screen to book. I got my hair appointment coming this weekend. We had to, um, you know, due to the circumstances, we had to record this episode a little bit earlier in the week, and I'll tell you guys in a minute. But um, excuse me, they've made me for over 65 episodes of the show make me look like an entire snack and i love it marcus guerrero chris reyes santos Cordova, d rod and sid rodriguez thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode with elite barbershop and of course to the queen miss kaylin flores will elevate waco waco's newest premier shop selling nothing but the best elevate is proud to bring you all of a one-of-a-kind attire and the most exotic merchandise on the market they guarantee all gas and no breaks congratulations kaylin to your new location on west waco drive i love going over there getting silly buns his cbd pens i love getting my exotic snacks i love it love it love it thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair more to come later all right, guys. So like I said, I'm really excited to be recording this episode of The Public Affair. I've got this queen on the show. A lot of people have been telling me, hitting me up and telling me to invite her on the show. I've been watching her build her business up from the ground. I, I love it. I'm here for it. When I invited her onto the show, she was more than happy to come. She's visiting us from Dallas. Waco native, but she lives in Dallas now. Here representing CTX Credit Repair. I got my girl, Christina Martinez, on this episode of The Public yes. Affair. How you doing? Good. How are you? You drove all the way from Dallas to tell us that we're all broke, girl. <laughs> no, I did not. That we're all broke and that we don't know what we're doing. I did not. <laughs> no, you didn't. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. I'm excited to be here. Good. Yes, I wore my business attire for you and I regret it because I'm sweating like a pig now. So I'm going to actually stop taking a sip of my wine <laughs> over my shirt a little bit. No, but uh, thank you again for being here. You know what? I've been watching you build CTX Credit Repair for such a long time. And, um, you know, to watch you build it from the ground up and one of my really good friends, Lee Vences, who I believe is your cousin, mm -hmm. um, he was one of the people that told me a little bit about you and your background. And, uh, you know, when Lee tells me 
me to do something, I just do it. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to No, but yeah, um, so many people were like, hey, have you heard about this girl, Christina Martinez? I was like, okay, give me a minute. Damn, damn. You know what I mean? So um, introduce yourself to us, please. Like, who are you? Why, why has everybody just been in my DMs begging me to invite you on the show? Well, my name is Christina <laughs> Martinez. Like you said, uh, I am from Waco. Mm -hmm. um, I moved to Dallas when I was like 15 years old. Okay. Um, and pretty much I did start CTX Credit Repair here in Waco first just because it is my hometown. Right. And I did a lot of research in this community, and I'm like, this is what Waco needs. They need help right. with, you know, people need help fixing their credit. Right. So I did my research, and I said, you know what, this is going to be my first stop, and that's exactly what I did. People thought I was crazy, but right. I'm like, hey, this is where it needs to be. Well, and you know what? I, I see it so much on social media. A lot of us don't really, like, we're not taught about credit growing mm -hmm. up. You know what I mean? Like I'm a nerd. So I just kind of like researched credit on my own. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause I had mm -hmm. no friends, but back in the day, now I'm here. But you know, a lot of people are not educated when it comes to credit and stuff like that. And there's people that are older than us that kind of don't got it together. Like we were just talking outside and Corey was just saying how his credit is like 550 something. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, you know, but uh, not to put his business out there, but <laughs> he said it was okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, before we get into all that though, can you talk to us a little bit about your life growing up? So you said you moved to Dallas when you were 15. Yeah, so just, mm -hmm. just to give you a background about me. Yeah. So I was a teen mom. Um, I had my Sweet. first kid at 15. Oh. So I um, had to grow up quick. Mm -hmm. And um, I did face a lot of hardships. I okay. faced a lot of struggles um, growing up as far as on my own choices that I made. Right. So... Um, now, when you say on your own choices, were you being like slatatious or were you just being single um, mom? Not slatatious, <laughs> definitely just being real rebellious. Okay. Um, I was a really rebellious kid growing right. up. So, you know, I just got into stuff that I shouldn't have. And mm. so um, I ended up pregnant at 15. There you go. So um, I had to grow up quick. So <laughs> um, I did face a lot of, you know, right, struggles right. with that, of course. And so when I got to, I got to an age where I was just like, you know what? Um, I don't want to be a statistic. I want right. to be somebody who actually makes a difference. Right. I don't want team moms to feel like this is, you know, like this, is it. this is it. This yeah. is it. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in a very, very toxic relationship for like 10 years. Shoot. And it was very, very hard. Um, it uh -huh. was abusive. It was oh really phys everything that you could think of I went through. Uh -huh. So I just said, you know what, This there's more to my life than this. And okay. I was like, I, got, I have to find a way. Like yeah. I have to. So I just really just found the motivation in me to be my own boss. Mm. Um, I did do, um, like I was telling you before, uh -huh. I was a nurse recruiter uh, supervisor for three to four years, uh -huh. um, but I've been in the home health field for a long time. And so right, from right. going to that to this, it was like a <laughs> whole different world. But, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't regret it, not one bit. No, good, don't. Not yeah. one bit. You, you know what? When you talked about some of the hardships that you face as a teen mom, I've had a lot of girls on the show. Not a lot. I mean, I mean I've had women on the show, mm -hmm. you know, talk about their hardships. My last being Ashley Ledesma, mm -hmm. who received very, very uh, positive feedback from that episode. Um, you being pregnant at 15, were, were your parents, I mean, because you said that you were rebellious, did they kind of like throw you to the wolves or how did that work out? You know what? I um, actually... I don't want to say that they throw me to the wolves, okay. but on my, I, I was just, I was so stubborn. I was right. a very stubborn kid. So, <laughs> um, my mom and my dad have always been the, my biggest supporters. Right. Um, even now they're my biggest supporters. Okay. But there was a time that mom and dad were like, you know what? Like you need to figure it. it out on your own. Right. And I feel like, I feel like parents should draw the line at a certain point. Right. Like I really do because I feel like a lot of parents enable their children. They do. Uh, yeah. And then like, you know, they just kind of let them get away with whatever they want. Then they grow up to be losers with bad credit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Exactly. And so I guess for you, I mean, it was a little bit of a different situation. Definitely. And mm. my mom and my dad, they've, they've always been hard workers. They, right. you know, do what they got to do. And so, you know, there, there did come a day that they were like, you know what, you need to figure it out on your own. And mm -hmm. I kind of do thank them for it. Cause I'm yeah. like, that's what made me who I am today. Right. I was like, well, you know what? I don't have my mom. I don't have my dad. Right. Um, I gotta, I gotta get my shit together. Yeah, for sure. So that's exactly what I did, and I just ever since then, ever since I left that abusive relationship, ever since mm -hmm. I just really self motivated. Mm -hmm. I'm just a self motivated person. Right. I just did what I had to do, and I started motivating other women. Yeah. And, my DMs have been crazy oh, really? with women. With just, women? Just, <laughs> just reaching out. Just, you know, they're just, they see, they've seen my journey. Because yeah, a lot of sure. people have been friends with me for years yeah. and years. And so they just see my journey and they're like, you know, you really motivating me to leave this or to do this mm -hmm. or to do that. And that, to me, that's 
that is enough to no, make me totally i get you you know you, you're talking about being in a i, I want to touch on this a little bit because i always feel like it's so important um you were saying that you were in a toxic relationship was this with your baby's daddy or did or were you in one of those like teen pregnancies where they up and left you um this is yeah with the baby daddy so i have okay so i have four kids yeah uh, so my first three kids that was my first real serious relationship yes. and so that's who that was with and okay so it was uh, so yeah i was with him since i was 15 all the way to about mm -hmm. 24 years of age when you say abusive do you mean like he was like beating on you or was it just like more mentally abusive or? um definitely physically mentally, oh, wow. every that's what i said every which way you could think about like since you were 15 though or um probably it started like when i was like 16 17 oh, okay yeah and it was really tough and it's something that i do talk about i'm very vocal just because i'm mm -hmm. i like to be honest with people oh, that's yeah. that's what i went through and um so yeah if you're it's just what yeah. it is. So no so okay, so you're you're in this relationship and then um you're fifteen years old, so you really don't have a lot of direction because you're also rebellious and then you just have a baby. Mm -hmm. Um what would you say the source of it was? Like I mean, what was maybe the stress of being a, was he older or was he about your age? Or? No, actually he was just about a year and a half older. Okay, so would you say it was the stress of being a parent or do you think he had like some internal issues? Like Definitely internal issues. Okay. Definitely. And so um and you see the thing with me is I have a big heart. So mm. I would always try to look past it, look past it and mm -hmm. Um, I just kind of tolerated it more than I really needed to. I always wonder what it is about people that find themselves just tolerating it. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. like what's going through your mind? I mean, do, are you just making excuses for him and saying, you know, oh, he's going to change? <laughs> no, <laughs> for doesn't. sure. I think what it is, you're so caught up in the life that you're living. Like okay. when you're going, when you're actually in a relationship like that, you don't, you don't see that. But when you're out of it and you've mm -hmm. actually like healed and you're actually doing stuff right. and you see other people going through it, that's when you're like, oh, damn, that's okay. that was me and I was dumb. Right, right. So, I mean, like, so when you say the life that you were living, I mean, we, surely at the teenagers, you guys weren't living like some glamorous life. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, like, what would you say the source of it was at all? I mean, you said that he was dealing with some internal issues. Did he drink and stuff like that? Do you think that was triggers? Um, as we or? got older, yeah. So as we got okay. older, he definitely um, started drinking a lot, of course. And then some people just can't drink. OK, I say that all the time. Nobody yeah. listens to me. Yeah, so, so he <laughs> yes. just started drinking. Um, Just really cheating the you know mm. stuff that men do. men roaches exactly yeah. so you know he just started and then he's you know what then he's cheating and it's your fault exactly and then they leave you a deck of magic cards mm -hmm. and tell you thanks for the good night little exactly fuck. <laughs> 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 sorry I, I started having flashbacks so so yeah so you know it's it was a lot of that and so you know i just i really truly just woke up one day and mm -hmm. i was like uh fuck this so you were just done yeah and i just did, did it ever happen in front of you, you know because I, I talked about this with ashley ledesma and um she was saying that it got to the point where her and him just started throwing hands like like two grown-ass men but she said that it was only i believe don't quote me on this i would believe only one time it almost might have happened in front of one of her kids mm -hmm. and then she said that she kind of just conditioned herself to where it was just gonna happen in the bedroom because it's gonna happen anyway so let's just do it discreetly mm -hmm. uh what how would you say yours was like exposed um definitely a lot behind closed doors okay um probably one again one yeah same right. as her one time in front of my kids but more than anything, he was a lot of people. He just had this, you know, this persona where people didn't really mm -hmm. think that he was like that. Mm -hmm. um, but most definitely, it was a lot behind closed doors, and right. a lot of people did not know that I went through that. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, how do you even keep that a secret? Because I mean, honestly, I really truly just shut out the world. Like, okay. I just I went MIA on a lot of people. Did you? Um, and so, you know, when I started, when I left him, and I started kind of you know, doing my own thing and I started working and right. that's when I really became this social butterfly. Yeah, I yeah. Was just, you know, <laughs> well, this, you found yourself. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, and I'm grateful. I'm so happy that I am where I am right now. Right, for sure. No, I got you. Okay, so, you know, uh, and just, you know, so we don't have to harp on it too much because, uh, you know, uh, there's so much I want to talk to you about about your credit. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I guess what was the turning point for you being in that abusive, abusive relationship where you just kind of got up and, I mean, was it something that you got up and snuck out in the middle of the night or did you have to talk with him and say, hey, we're done? Um, or, so it was <laughs> it was towards the end. So I just had my third baby, which right. we've had three you kids. You guys have three, three kids. kids. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I had my third baby and I my baby was three months actually. Mm. And at the time, he was, his drinking, and I'm pretty sure he started doing drugs. Right. Um, got worse. Allegedly. So, right. <laughs> Alleg please, I don't want to be sued. Uh, allegedly, I'm <laughs> yes, sorry. Allegedly. Um, and so um, there was just a whole bunch of stuff mm. going on. So I just knew that was it. And bitches yeah. all around. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, and I truly did. I woke up one day and I said, I'm done. Okay. And I'm done. And, um, he thought I was playing, but right, I'm like, right. no, I'm really truly done. Okay. Now, did he did he hit you, and then you were done, or did you just wake up and say, you know, I'm, I'm at that here. point, actually, I don't even think we were even physically fighting anymore. Okay. I was just mentally checked out. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I, I think a lot of people don't see the the mental abuse that comes with it as well, and right. how it affects you as a person. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. I mean, I, and I've talked about. A, I was never in an abusive relationship, but I was definitely involved in a situation with a close friend of mine where he, um, you, you know, used drugs and turned to drinking a lot and stuff. Mm-hmm. And me trying to help him as his friend, and then not being able to, and then you feel like it's your fault. Yeah. Like, I, I, I never understood how people let somebody else affected their life until I was in that situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then I remember checking out and everybody's like, Andrew, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> I was like, just don't fucking talk to me. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so for you, you just scoop up the kids and you take off. Well, actually, um, he, I told him to leave. Oh. Yeah. And I how'd that him, go? He left. <laughs> he just peaced out? He left, but see, he thought I was playing. Okay, I got so, you. So, you know, I was like, no, I'm really, truly yeah. done. And, and just never, never came back. Right. How did you, um, did you find forgiveness in that situation, Christina? I did. Okay. Um, it did take me a long time, though. Like how? And have you talked to him? Yeah, I think it was about a year or two after. Okay. Um, that I I told him because I had to heal myself. I said, right. you know what? I forgive you for everything you did to me. Okay. Um, and I have to say this to you so that I can truly move on with my life and right. really, you know, do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I have found forgiveness. I'm I'm glad to say that I'm able to just live my life and not yeah. have to worry about anything. Right. Right. But did you have like one final conversation with him? Before moving on, like, I mean, I, or after moving on, like, when you found the forgiveness, like, you, are you, how are you guys now, I guess, like, your relationship? Because um, he is the father of your children. Yeah, right now, um, I don't speak in terms. So. Okay, you know what I Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And as long as he's not putting hands on the kids, then exactly. we good. Okay, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, okay, well, you know, again, I think it is important, and thank you for sharing that with mm-hmm. us, because, you know, I think it is important for people to, you know, do for that. Sure. So, yeah. For sure, for sure. So, I definitely want to talk to you about, um, you know, becoming a credit repair specialist, mm-hmm. and what your inspiration was behind that. So, when I was talking to my really good friend lee um he was telling me how you kind of had just lo- don't look at me like, like you were just friends <laughs> he's my homie that's my boy right there <laughs> she's looking at like like he's like side piece and he's not <laughs> okay when he when i was talking to him about it he was telling me that um you know yeah christina like had kind of lost it all at one point and she was at rock bottom and then all of a sudden you're cr- like can you walk me through the journey of becoming what you are today yeah so and I actually do love and enjoy wa- talking about this. Yeah, so for sure. At some point, um, I really truly was at rock bottom. Okay. I had nothing. I had nothing. Like I went through it. That's why I said I went through a lot of struggles. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I went through the no lights and yeah, barely yeah. making it to pay, you know, to get some food and things like mm. that. And so. And four kids. Yeah. And four. Well, at what? the time it was three. Three. Okay. So, um, you know. And I just, like I said, I just said one day, you know what? I need to find a good job. I need mm-hmm. to do this. And so my journey to where I am today is that I. Got, I landed my first job in a corporate setting. Yeah, yeah. And so that's when I started, you know, um, I did a pediatric home health. Okay. So I was hiring nurses. I right. networked a lot with nurses. I met a lot of great people okay. along the corporate world. And then um, I got the opportunity to be a supervisor. Oh, okay. So um, I met some really great people there. Um, shout out to my boss, Toby. Yeah, what's up, and, Toby? Oh, boss, Toby. <laughs> and so, um, so, yeah, he really taught me a lot about business. Okay. And I helped them open up their business. So... I just kind of saw how everything was now. Right. And so um, I was laid off during, okay. right before COVID. I was right. laid off. And so um, I just started to uh, do, a, I did a cleaning business. Right. And so me and my mom got together and we started promoting this cleaning business and it really took off in Dallas. Oh, okay. So I met a lot of realtors along the way. Right. So I already kind of had a, a little taste of how to run a business. Totally. And then um, as far as credit repair goes, I had met this girl in Dallas. She mm-hmm. has a credit repair company and, you know, she had told me a little bit about it and mm-hmm. how the business works. And of course, at the time I was working on my credit and I was, I had another different company working <laughs> on it. And so she just told me a little bit about it and I started mm-hmm. doing my own research and I learned about it and yeah. I did research and research and research. I did courses. I right. talked to um, people who are in the industry already. Okay. And I just registered the business, and that's what I did. And that's what you did. You know, I never understood how somebody else can fix your credit. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I always thought that was just kind of something you did on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, I've never had anybody else, like, put hands on my credit. And I Mm -hmm. actually have really good credit, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. But um, how? what do you do to fix, like, what... How do you specialize? So this is what I tell everybody. So what I tell everyone is pretty much, you know, you get into a bind where Mm. you end up, you know, hey, late payments, you have collections, you have things that obviously you fell behind on. Right. So what we help you do is we help you uh, try and get those off of your credit report because that is what's affecting your credit. Right. Totally. Um, So what happens a lot of times is people are like, well, I'm just going to pay off this collection um, because it's like two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars. But you could easily see if they made any errors when they're reporting that account and get it deleted. So what I really try to do is save people money mm. um, and it works because I, sh- I 
I show results. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so, but my biggest thing, I don't really even like to, uh, so if you notice, I don't really advertise a lot of the deletions. I advertise more of credit education because okay. that's the part where people get lost. Okay. So, Can you elaborate on that? Because so um, yeah. now I'm lost. <laughs> so, so typically when you get, when you, when you get, when I get on the phone with somebody, they're right. like, well, my credit's messed up and I don't know what to do and I've just been stuck here. I don't mm. know what to do. And so a lot mm. of it is just, it's just rebuilding up your credit. You're going to have to get some secured credit cards. You're going to okay. have to start building up positive credit history. And right. that's where I come in and educate them. Look, these are the cards that you need to go and apply yeah. for. They're going to actually help you build up your credit. So it's a lot of credit education. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I tell this to a lot of people. That's how I built my credit too, was I got like a cheapy little credit card, like mm -hmm. Discover, shout out Discover. <laughs> and I always tell everybody like, when you want to do it, because I had no credit and then I got credit. It was like, great. And so I would just tell everybody like, get you, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, okay? Because mm -hmm. you're the specialist and I'm not, I'm the public yeah. affair. So, <laughs> um, you know, I talk about like men and stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, would, I got my credit card mm -hmm. and I would only buy gas, like something right? I knew that I can afford That's and correct. then just pay it off like yep. two days later. And people thought I was crazy because they're like, well, why are you doing it that way? I was like, because you're supposed to show that you could pay back a loan. You know yeah. what I mean? So typically I just tell them, you're going to get your secured credit card. There's, okay. You know, you're going to, like you said, use it for gas, whatever, mm -hmm. lunch. Okay. Pay it back. And then don't use that card anymore until after, mm -hmm. you know, that your due date goes by and then go ahead and, you know. But you want to keep the key is keep your credit utilization low, not max out your credit cards. Right. Oh, yeah, because that's another thing, too. Like, I remember reading up on it and saying, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is it like you can't spend more than 30 percent of your correct. total spending limit mm -hmm. or something like that? Mm -hmm. And it's a yeah, because I think a lot, I think. <laughs> Oh, I, I don't want to tell the story. I'm sorry. It's inappropriate. I'll tell you why later. But, um, <laughs> I think where a lot of people mess up is because you do, like, you get a credit card, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, my first credit card, I think my spending limit was, like, $1,250, okay? Mm -hmm. So, it's uh, some people hear that somebody's giving them $1,250. Exactly. And, and then go spend it on whatever the fuck you want. Yep. You know what I mean? And you're maxing it out. And, and then, then you're, you're maxing like, it out, yeah. Yeah. So, what I tell everybody is you could easily get a $1,000 credit card, but okay. can you pay those $1,000 back right. right away before the next? No. So That's why you have to ask them for exactly. it. <laughs> so, that's exactly yeah. why you want to keep your credit. You pay, use what you can pay back, okay. right, pretty much. You know, what What inspired you, I guess, to tell people that they're broke and they don't have no credit? Like, like I definitely what, don't tell people they're broke. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But, like, what, do you, what, do you, what, what made you, like, wake up one day? Because I know you said that you met a girl. Mm -hmm. And so, but... but why well, like typically, you know what i mean so for me more so than anything it's because that's me i've i've mm. been i've been there i've been the single mom with bad credit mm -hmm. um i it took me almost two three years to fix my own credit oh, so really? i know the journey that people go on and i know it's mm. frustrating and i know how many times you may want to throw in the towel okay. so that's what really truly inspired me is i know there's people out there feeling the same way i was feeling so that's exactly totally. what i did no okay yeah so so you, you know what you strike me as the type of person that just kind of likes to help people I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Which I totally yeah. You know, what's the um, biggest mistake a person makes um, for not building credit? Like, why, why why, don't people, you know, eventually run into that? Okay. You know so I mean? when it comes to that, the big, I think what people make a big mistake on is they just feel like, okay, I have bad credit, so I'm just going to leave it alone for seven years until I'm But how do you go from not having any to bad? That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? You're, are you talking about those who don't have any yeah, credit yeah, at well, all? Yeah, because there's people who like don't that are older than me, like don't have credit, so you can't go get a car. You have mm -hmm. to go buy like a cash car. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The thing is, they don't even do the research to see how to even start credit. So they might just assume that they have exactly. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, or they just they just don't know what they don't know, and okay, you know. Right, and why do you think that people don't reach out for the resources to get help with that? To be honest with you, when mm -hmm. it comes to credit repair, a lot of people think it's it doesn't work. Okay. And so, and I'm just being real. No. Yeah. So elaborate on that. Why? Um, have because, people doubted you? Um, I actually have not been doubted. Oh, I think okay. it's because of who I am, but, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. But, um, I think what it is is because I will say there is a lot of companies who have scammed people really? out of money. And so it's very unfortunate because I do feel like I have to kind of prove myself because one thing about me is I try to keep it very real. Totally, yeah. And so okay. I never want to do that. So I think that's what the reason why people don't reach out is because they feel like, I don't know, I should be in for real or yeah, she really yeah. help me. When you say that companies were known, because I, I, again, I don't know. So when you say that they're known for like scamming people, how does that happen? Or they pretty much uh, tell them a good story and say, I'm going to do this, this and that. And it's uh, $1,500 and they pay it and then they never see them again. Oh, really? So, you know, and that's, and it happens a lot. Does that I, come mainly from like independent credit repair people or is uh, that independent, like big corporations? Big, big corporations. Really? I've heard it from every which way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So what's, what, diff like, how, why do you not, how do you not do that? Well, first off, um, mm -hmm. I don't think my fees are as high as other people. <laughs> okay. um, I do definitely try to keep it affordable for, affordable affordable. for everybody. Mm -hmm. Cause I definitely, I mean, you're trying to get back on, you know, right terms or whatever. Uh -huh. Um, 
but I think I think the reason why I'm, why I'm so different is because I'm really honest with people. If I, mm-hmm. I tell them this is not going to come off, right. or if th- I just I'm just really real with them. Right. So, yeah. Um, I think that's why I really have had a good feedback here in Waco. Yeah. So have you faced backlash? I guess like if somebody reached out to you and said, "Hey." Help me fix my credit. And then maybe you ran into the, the situation where I can't, there's nothing I can do for you. Do you know what I mean? I mean, is there a credit that's unfixable? Uh, no. No, okay. Mm-mm. But have you had, like, what's the hardest situation that you've been in where you're just kind of like, oh, no. Um, <laughs> like, this isn't going to work, You know what, Susie. thankfully, I uh-huh. haven't been in that situation. Okay. I have been in situations where they don't need credit repair. They okay. just need to build up the credit. Right. And I just tell them, hey, this is what you need to do. Okay. You know what, can we talk about how people can start building? Okay, so like I said, I got a credit card. Are there any other options or avenues that people can go to to start building credit? Um, There is, but... My biggest suggestion is going to be for you to start with, uh, like you said, like Discover, um, okay. Capital One. Right. Those are the main two that for sure I always recommend. Um, and really, I, that's really the, the first main place that I tell everybody, start mm-hmm. there and then watch everything else unfold. As I, far as yeah, because I was going to say, do you, are there places that don't give people, like, I mean, what about the person that just can't get a credit card? Do you know what I mean? So those who don't have any credit, oh, yeah. right? are you talking about those who don't? Yeah, because I didn't have any credit when I called Discover and they gave me a credit card. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of weird, different, but uh, <laughs> I've had people come to me, they don't have any credit. And so they're like, what do I do to start building up my credit? Mm-hmm. You go and you get a secured credit card, which what a secured credit card is, you're paying the deposit on that card. Oh. So that's your credit limit and that you're going to act like that's your credit card. Once they can trust you, then they're going to up your limits oh, and things like that. So it's kind of like I have $200. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you a $200, like 200 bucks mm-hmm. in the form of credit. And you're going to put it on this card. Okay. And so you're going to that's mel- my spending limit. Exactly. Oh, they do that? I didn't know they did that. Yes. Where do they do that at? <laughs> and you'd be surprised. There's a lot of secured credit cards out okay. there. Mm-hmm. And so that's typically the first uh, suggestion that I make to everybody. So, so people can, okay, because you know what, because, no, that's crazy, I didn't know that. I had a friend that I was helping him, I, you know what, hold on. I had a friend that I was helping him, like, apply for a credit card, and he didn't have any credit, and um, they denied him, and I was like, I don't know what to do next for you. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? And Definitely, so if you, yeah. get, if you don't have any credit, and you're getting denied everywhere, it's because you don't have any credit, right. you need to start with a secured credit card. And so banks will do that for you, like, your, yeah, your so, bank. Yeah, so... So if you have an immediate like a bank or credit union, uh-huh. ask them first if they have a secured credit card. If not, go to Discover or Capital One. Yeah. D- does that like is that like a flight risk for banks and stuff like that? They're like do, are most on board with that? Oh or? yeah, for sure. Because really? they're helping you build up your credit. Okay. Yeah. And, and I guess you know what? As far as like like interest fees and stuff like that go, um, I mean, are you do you specialize in that as well? Like, or? it just depends on the card. I mean, okay. I'm I don't mind whenever they apply for cards. I go I. Don't mind going mm-hmm. over the terms with the client, depending on what it is, yeah. things like that. But other than that, with um, secured credit cards, you're looking at a little bit of high okay. interest fees. No, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you know what, um, Christina, t- like pretend I'm like a person with like shitty credit. Okay, mm-hmm. Christina has shitty credit. Like, where are we starting? Uh, so first, I need to look at your credit report. <laughs> okay, so my credit report it says that my credit is like a 400. Okay, so then we're going to need to start doing a lot of credit building. Okay. So you're going to go and get two secured credit cards. You're going to probably, if you don't have an installment loan, which an installment loan typically is like either a a student loan, Mm -hmm. a personal loan, uh, if you don't, or auto loan, if you don't have any of those, you need to get one of those. Okay. The key here is that you want to have a good credit mix. That makes you have a good, strong credit profile. Like a credit mix, like how? Credit mix means like you have... Two or three revolving credit lines okay. and two installment loans. That's considered a good credit mix. Okay, so I'm trying to get my credit to the 800s, okay? Okay. I, I'll just share that my credit score is a perfect 777 <laughs> <laughs> as of just yesterday. And because I checked because I knew you were coming on the show. Um, I, I can't, I, I was almost there at one point, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and I can't get into the 800s. Christina, what's going on here? Well, is your credit utilization low? Meaning what? Like, are you using your credit cards above 30%? No. No. Do I need to be? No. No. Okay. No. no. Okay. No. Um, okay. I mean, I really. I, I don't want to say how much the spending limit is on here because I don't get robbed, but it, it's quite high and it's not that much. Like Wait, I don't owe that much. Are you using them? You're using them. I, I have one. I, okay. So here's the thing. I have one dedicated credit card that I use, my Chase Freedom card. Mm-hmm. I use that card um, like in case of emergencies or if I'm running, you know, low on the checking account. I'm not rich yet. <laughs> so, you know, we all go through that shit. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I'm into that. Anyway, um, I have one like designated like go-to credit card, which mm-hmm. is my Chase Freedom. I also have a Discover card that's like, it's rainbow color. It's actually kind of cute. I kind of only use that one every once in a while okay. just so that way they don't turn it off because mm-hmm. I kind of feel like I have loyalty to them. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, one time I applied for a GameStop credit card just for shits and giggles just to show 
with somebody that I could do it so they could shut the fuck up. And then I never used it and they closed it. Um, God, what else do I have? I have, I have the chase freedom. I have the discover. Um, I think that's all I have. And I don't owe anything on discover. Okay. Like there, I know there's a pretty, there's a spending. Do you limit. have an auto loan? No, I paid my car off. It just needs a paint job. Okay. So <laughs> more than likely you're going to have to, you need to add. I need to get another credit yeah, line. You need to add okay. another, not a, you have two to three uh, revolving credit lines, right? I have, I have two credit lines as of right now. You need to add like an installment loan. Okay. So, what, what is that? Um, installment loan is like pretty much you're like on a fixed, like 12 months, you're paying maybe $40 a month. Um, really? And so like a personal loan, like I said, personal oh, so loan. No, no. You're saying go to homes and buy new furniture is what you're saying. No, let's do, um, <laughs> have you heard of self lender? No. So self lender is a really good tool to credit build. Okay. Um, so I would recommend you to that one. I mm. wouldn't want you to go get furniture or anything like that because sometimes those interest fees and stuff like that. Yeah, but you know, yeah. This is gonna pay I mean, twelve months. I mean, I want new cute furniture, uh, Christina. But yeah, if it's it. an installment, <laughs> you need to add an installment. Loan. Okay, okay, and, I got or you. Or you just need to add some more credit. Well, yeah. Well, hold on, because then the home zone card kind of counts as a credit card, I think, though. No? I wouldn't know. I don't know how no. they do their. Yeah. Okay. It's with Synergy Bank. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Fuck, I really don't know if I can just. Yeah. I just want my credit to be. Yeah. Eight, it eight, just. Eight. It depends. I have to look at your credit <laughs> profile. Okay, yeah. yeah. So if I okay, so if I go buy my chateau, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So here's the thing. When I paid off my car, I thought that it was gonna take my credit straight to eight hundred. Like mm -hmm. I thought they were gonna be. Like, oh yeah, he paid it, it off. It lowered it. It lowered it a little bit. It mm -hmm. did, and mm -hmm. I was like. Eh. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? One time that shit went to the 600s, so I almost started crying. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I was, I'm not gonna fucking lie. You want to know what it was? Because I, one of my really good friends, I helped her get cable a long time ago. And then uh, we didn't pay it. Oh <laughs> no! Then it went to fucking collections. And then, yeah. is it true that those fall off after seven years? Um, it is true, but okay. some don't. Yeah, I was gonna say you probably don't advise waiting seven years for no. that to mm -hmm. fall off, right? Like you no. should just go pay. It. <laughs> and I was being petty too. That shit was like a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and the thing is, you yeah. know, as I've been doing my research, you know, you hear seven years, but some things are still on there. Okay. So, you know, but I would have to look at your credit profile to really yeah. tell you. Yeah, I just, I really just want to get to the 800 so I can start eating at 135. You're almost there though. No, I am almost there. I just, I can't get there. I feel like, it, you know what it is? I feel like I'm at the, the, the I'm climbing the mountain, right? And there's a hot man up there. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just can't reach the man. And he's like <laughs> laughing at me like, huh, you can't because you're fat. Don't give like, up though. You're almost there. <laughs> no, but I'm still single. <laughs> you know oh my goodness. Okay, wait, no, uh, back to the, okay. So if I buy my chateau, right? Because me and David are looking for my chateau. Mm -hmm. Shout out David Sandalanias. And so, um. If I if I do the loan and I take that loan, how do, does it affect my credit negatively or positively? Or what kind of loan is it? So it's a homeowner's loan. I, I guess first time homeowners. Uh -huh. I don't know. I, I, I mean, anytime David, you go, it? anytime you go apply for new credit, it's gonna maybe kick your scores down a little bit. So he did check my credit score and it did knock it down just like a tad. Like a tad. A, yeah, it was like a tad. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, so when I do take out that loan, I'm paying on my house. Does it does it affect negatively when I miss a payment or if the house gets like repossessed? Or, oh, more, yeah, definitely. Or, or or like if I'm paying on it. Like, does it affect my credit regardless? Do you know what I mean? Uh, no. I mean, any late payment, you definitely don't want to do that. Okay. Um, I tell everybody, pay your bills on time. Mm -hmm. If anything, pay them before. Um, and so, yeah, definitely don't pay your bills late. Well, I don't. I just, you know, one time I paid my uh, internet late and I was... That was embarrassing calling. Yeah. <laughs> you can you connect me back you know, Like, I gave you the fucking red numbers talking <laughs> about negative and shit. I was like, <laughs> yep. You know what, Christina? When is the best time to start building credit? Um, I mean, as soon as, I mean, if, when you turn 18, that's when you really technically can start okay. building up your credit. Um, a lot of people don't know that if you're, you know, like your parents have good credit, mm -hmm. they can add you as an authorized user if oh. you have good credit and you're kind of like piggybacking off of their okay. credit scores. So, but I mean, if you're 18 and you want to start building up at that, it's really good to have a long credit age. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that. So right. the sooner... That you can, which is 18, the better, but make sure that you're taking care of it. Yeah, I would definitely say I was in my early 20s when I started. Yeah. You know, why don't they teach us credit about, like, when we're growing up in school and stuff like that? Like, what's going on here? I feel like that's a really vital thing. to Because, like, we, we can't buy houses. Mm -hmm. We can't buy brand, brand new nice cars mm -hmm. without credit. Why is that something that, do you think the education system is at fault for that? Or, like, who, I do. It's who kind is? Of, you know, I don't know who to blame, but okay. I definitely feel like they should have it in schools for sure. Because... Yeah. Um, there is a lot of people that come out of high school and they, you know, they're like, they get, they do get credit and then they mess it up at an early age right. because they don't know how to use it. Right. So definitely somebody needs to ask Yeah, credit. Yeah. I, well, yeah. I just, yeah. Schools come on with stuff. Um, yeah, I know they have a lot going on right now too, but anyway, um, <laughs> you know, how did you go about building your rep as a credit repair specialist? Like, I mean, cause obviously it's not like you just started and everybody was like, Hey, like how did you manage to get your first client to trust you and say, Hey, this is my first time, but I got you. You know what? Um, I will say that I've. 
I feel like I've built enough strong uh, networking, um, I guess, enough networking with yeah, people yeah. that people trust me. Okay. So a lot of a lot of my clients came from word of mouth. Oh, and really? So it's like, you know, hey, go to this girl. Like she knows what she's doing right. or, you know, I can trust her. Okay. So a lot of it is trust. Yeah. People trust me. And that to me is very important because mm-hmm. if you're trusting me with your credit, your socials, everything, then, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a big thing. So. Um, I just started promoting a lot on social media right. yeah, you do. and <laughs> uh, I'm a big Latino supporter. So okay. I feel like that really uh, attracted people too, because mm-hmm. I've had people message me and say, I love like, what you're doing in the Latino community. Okay. And so um, I just pushed a lot. I pushed it because I feel like us Latinos, we weren't really taught okay. about that. Yeah. And I think that can be, that can go the same for anybody, like mm-hmm. no matter what the, the, right. the gender is or the gender, the race is. Uh-huh. But um, you know, um, I can see that you have a lot of self-confidence. I could definitely read that about you, which I really like. Um, how do you not get misconstrued as a bitch? Because I feel like people do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people, are, no, she's a bitch. Like fuck her. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like how do you how do you not like how do you maintain not maintain that image? You know what I mean? Um, like, like, do people ever misconstrue you as that? Yes. Okay. They do, and I don't know. I just break the ice. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like I'm cool as fuck. But no, yeah, you are cool as fuck. I like uh, you. But yeah. you know, I just I just like meeting new people. Okay. I love. I just feel like if you don't network, you ne- you never know. You may open mm-hmm. a door that will take you to places you've never thought of. So, yeah. um, do you think your high confidence came from a lot of the the turmoil that you went through back in the day? Most definitely. Yeah. It took me years to get where I am right now. Really, as okay. far as confidence, because if you met me eight years ago, <laughs> no way, no way I would be sitting yeah. here. Yeah. No, but so but but, but I, you know I. I a lot of people will will say that oh she's a bitch she's that she's stuck up but like I think when like yeah, I've been through my fair share of shit too like as an adolescent and you know growing up mm-hmm. in my early adulthood and I've got this you know I walk around with the poise you know what I mean because yeah. I'm proud of myself exactly. damn it and if nobody else is gonna be proud of me I want to be proud of me too exactly. you know what I mean so um have you had to deal with any like I guess kind of competition like has has anybody else tried to like steal your thunder um. You know, I don't feel like I've, I really don't pay attention. Okay. Um, I just try to do what I do. I kind of stay in my own lane, do what I have to do. Yeah. Um, there is been, mind your business. Yeah, there has been people that I feel like maybe look at me like, oh, you know, but I'm like, I don't care. I just, right. I do what I have to do. I help people, and that's that's what I wake up every day to do. Okay, I got you. You know what? Um, just just uh, to touch a little bit more on the credit, I have I've been wanting to ask this question: Can somebody manage their whole life without having any credit? Do you think it makes life harder for you or because there, there's people who do it, but like, you know what I mean? Um, People probably, I mean, they could, but it would uh, probably be really hard. I yeah. mean, you, I mean, to buy a home, they're running your credit to buy a nice car. You're yeah. going to run your credit. So then you're constantly having to depend on somebody else that has really good credit. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. No, I got you. Mm-hmm. And, and what, you know, just as far as the credit score like scale goes, mm-hmm. what's good credit and what's bad credit? So good credit, you're at like above six. 70, 680, yeah. uh, bad credit, you're like 300s, 400s. So, yeah. Um, and you know, people get there, but I don't want people to feel embarrassed when they get, when they no, call me, to, yeah. you know, and I tell everybody, don't be embarrassed. Hey, it happens to some of us. Absolutely. Just as long as you're on this phone call and you're trying to fix it, that's, that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know what? Um, so people can, you're, you're, you live in Dallas, mm-hmm. but you come to Waco often. Mm-hmm. Um, how can people get a hold of you? Like the people, the person watching this episode is like, Hey, my credit shit, I need to get that taken care of. How can they get a hold of you? Uh, so they can call, uh, you want me to say my phone number? Yeah, well, I, whatever, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, they can they can call the office. So they can actually Google CTX Credit Repair, okay. and the number will populate. You can call us at our office, or uh-huh. you can uh, text my cell phone. Um, CTX Credit Repair on Facebook, CTX Credit on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'm very, very social media. Yeah, you are. So you stay um, posting. They, yeah, they can find us yeah. on there. So Y'all ain't you know, going to miss Christina on exactly. Facebook. Okay, <laughs> she's and, there. And... <laughs> That's that's what's really got me to right. where I am. So I'm, you know, that's the only way you can. And, find and CT credit, CTX credit repair is yours. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes. So do you have people that work for you, or is it just you? Uh, no, it's just me. Oh, really? Yeah. Does it does it become quite daunting, like you know, taking care of all that by yourself? Or? Uh, not really. Well, it's just me, but I do have a disputing team. Okay. Um, that I, but it's not like I don't put that out there, but it's just mm. me that you're talking to. What's a disputing team? Um, so pretty much we're working on your accounts. Oh, like they, they call whoever and be like, no, you gotta delete that. Uh, yeah. So we'll yeah. have a team. Yeah. What, what justifies some, an account being deleted off your credit? What do you mean? Like, like when you say that you can delete like a, a credit report. Errors. I mean, there's errors. a lot of errors. Yeah. So like, it's just like somebody typed that in by accident. Like, oh, they was money. Like, it's, it's more, <laughs> it's more than that, but yeah. pretty much a lot of these creditors make mistakes on your credit reports. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't pay attention to their credit reports. So. Right. 
That's pretty much what okay, it is. I got, you know, that's very insightful. So anybody that needs some credit repair, who's get, dealing with some shit credit right now, make sure you call my girl, Christina Martinez, mm-hmm. uh, um, CTX Credit Repair. She's going to take care of you. She's gorgeous, darling. She's hot. The wine is good. And she's smart. She, she's a boss bitch. I love it. Thank <laughs> you. I'm here for it. You know what? You sound very busy, you know, you know, helping us getting out of the struggle bus. Uh, when do you find time for your personal life? I mean, what do you like to do when you're not fixing people's credit? I'm very family oriented. So okay. I, I, I have two sisters that I'm always with. Um, I have my kiddos that one's in sport. Yeah. One's in sport. And so pretty much that's what I do on my free time. Uh-huh. Which that's, is, okay. It's my life. Is yeah. A little and are we, are we happily married now? I'm engaged right now. Oh, yeah. congratulations. I'm inviting myself to the wedding like I do everybody else's uh. wedding. <laughs> and if you need an MC, make sure you call me All because right. I, I provide that services as well for a very low price. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know what, Christina? Am I missing anything here? I'm really grateful that you came on because I do feel like this is a conversation that we needed to hear. There's a yes. lot of people that are not educated in credit. I didn't want you to give all your services away on the show because I really want people to reach out to you mm-hmm. and, you know, for, for those resources. Um, what am I missing here? Um, you pretty much covered everything other okay. than uh, they can, like I said, they can find us on social mm-hmm. media. Um, I'm just want to really put out there that I will always keep pushing for our Latino community yeah, to yeah. be united versus okay. against each other. Um, and so I'm really grateful that you invited me. Here. Uh, you know what? And you host a lot. I think you just invited me to an event, which girl, I have a wedding that day. I'm so sorry. I can't make it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they booked me for host, but, um, <laughs> but uh, and they paid, but, um, <laughs> you do, you do host a lot of like events. Yes. Get, like, what was inspired by that? Do you feel, because you know what? Hold on a second. I have a question. Because when I started the public affair and mm-hmm. I talked, I talked about this either on my last episode, episode before, um, I always remember a lot of people in town saying that nobody supported each other. Yeah. Okay. And everybody's like, no, fuck that. Nobody wants to see you win. Mm-hmm. But I, I have to say, I feel the opposite. I feel like a lot of people, like maybe that's just me being naive. I don't know. But I really feel like a lot of people ride for this podcast, which I'm like super. Well, see, I was for. told that I was told the same thing when I was going to come down here to open up my okay my business. But, um, I do do that for that very reason because I'm right. like, no, there is people who will support you, and I feel mm-hmm. the same way as you. I feel like I've been supported from day one. Too. Yeah, okay, so. got you. Yeah, and so when you host those events, mm-hmm. the, you know, showcasing these local businesses, I mean, mm-hmm. was the inspiration, I guess, just to give them a platform? Yeah, or? because you know, a lot of small businesses sometimes we feel, you know, like the little guy. Yeah, yeah. So I just want people to feel like, no, your business is important, and, you, and we see what you're doing. So keep pushing. I have learned in this podcast the importance of the local business because. This is run by local businesses. Like this podcast is sponsored Mm -hmm. by nothing but local businesses, which I'm very grateful for. Mm -hmm. And so um, to everybody who has even just sponsored one episode of the show, thank you so much. I really appreciate Mm -hmm. it. Like I do. And I I see, you know, I get a chance to talk to them about Mm -hmm. a lot of the shit that they do. You know what I mean? Like behind the scenes and like how hard it is and paperwork and stuff like that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, now I got to type invoice and shit. (laughs) So so like there's a, there's a lot. And, and what makes me really sad is because I do, you know, as much as I was saying, people ride for the public affair. I do see local businesses on my timeline specifically mm-hmm. um, that kind of take each other as a joke, mm-hmm. you know. And, I, and I've seen people like, you know, like kind of ridicule like some of my sponsors. And like, why, why give it that energy? Like, yeah. if you don't fucking like it, move on. Like, exactly. why you gotta like take the energy to bash them? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, have you ever had to experience something like that personally? You know, I haven't. And if it if it has happened, I don't even pay. You just attention. don't even see yeah, it. Yeah, because yeah. at the end of the day, I. That's really, truly why I do it. I just want uh-huh. everybody to stay united because right. why be against each other when we can work together? That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah just everybody do your own thing. Mind your business, go home. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really trying. Christine, I'm trying to get laid. Like, I'm. Just, <laughs> that's all I'm trying to do. Not about you, but anyway, I like guys, but. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, <laughs> that's a good turn. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the Public Affair. Christina Martinez, thank, thank you. you so much you. with CTX Credit Repair. I said it right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I fucked it up the first time. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on to thank this episode so of the. No, I'm really grateful. Um, one more time, where can people find you? Uh, they can find us on Facebook at CTX Credit Repair. Okay, got you. Yeah. And they just d- message you directly. Directly. Yep. Okay. So make sure you guys hit up my girl Christina if you need some credit repair information. Um. No, nah, we'll talk about the fees later. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right. yeah. Do you want to share the fees or like is it? Um, you no, said it's, it's pretty. Fun. That's that's more. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again so much for tuning into this episode. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe this very special episode. Of course, before we go, I definitely want to give a shout out to some of our sponsors of the Public Affairs and those local businesses. Of course, the Soko Soccer Academy with Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez. They're located on Franklin Drive. They offer team, small group, and individual skill training. And because of them, I get to shop in clearance and I bought all this business attire on mm-hmm. you know on you know, well actually I spent a lot of money. But 
Anyway, I got to buy, you know, smaller clothes. Um, they also op offer open play on Friday nights, and they specialize in, in soccer training and fitness training with Dominic Gutierrez and Isaac and London Carrillo. Because of them, I've lost over 55 pounds, and I am loving it, and I feel like a whole snack. Soka Soccer Academy, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Fat Boy Michelada and Botana with my boy Junior Banda. He provides the best micheladas and botana plates for yourself or for a party he's locally operated. Make sure you get the best and not the rest, darling. You can also go on his Facebook page at Fat Boy Micheladas y Potana and see the whole menu that he has. Everything that he makes is delicious and I can't wait to see him thrive. Thank you guys so much again for tuning into this episode of The Public Affair. Don't forget, if you're in the Waco area during the week, you can catch me on Power 108 every from Monday to Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. I'm live on the air now. That was my job. I'd love it. <laughs> okay. And thank you guys again so much for all the love and support. Again, thank you to Christina thank Martinez you. for coming coming in from Dallas yes. to be on the show. I really yes, appreciate it. Yes. And don't forget, darling, to always keep it between us. <laughs>